Hello everybody, welcome back to Drawing From Home. I'm going to be your host once again, Miss Dylan. So today guys, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to shade. Now, I know what you're thinking, Miss Dylan, we probably know what to do. Now, we do. We have learned how to shade before with different colors, with pencils, that sort of thing. But what we're going to do today is learn how to shade sort of softly, if that makes sense. We're going to learn what value means. Now, some of you already know. Now, what value means is how dark things are in comparison to one, one another. So this is very dark. This is very light, at least in comparison. Okay. So we're going to learn how to shade a simple vase using your pencil only. So we're not going to use color today. So put away any colored pencils or crayons that you brought out. We're first going to learn how to draw the vase, and then secondly, we're going to learn how to shade with value, just with your graphite pencil, okay? So, let's go ahead, grab your pencil and your paper, of course. Let's make sure that your paper is long ways up. So long ways up like this, okay? Now, once you're ready, Oh, sorry. Once you're ready, I'm gonna go ahead and show you one thing. So when I'm talking about value, let me kind of show you some examples. So here's a good value uh, graphite um, drawing. So it's just a simple wall, simple sphere. And the values are showing not only where sort of the 3D element of it, so it looks round because it's darker on this edge and lighter on this edge. Okay, so the artist used shadows to make it look three-dimensional, okay? And the light source is clearly coming from where? It's coming from the top left, okay? So just by using different sort of darknesses and lights, we have a three-dimensionality to our sphere, we have a light source, and we have shadows down here too. This is what we call a drop shadow, okay? Now, we again, we are doing this in black and white. It's usually easy to see things, see values through black and white, because sometimes with colors, here's another example, sometimes with colors is we get a little, a little muddled almost. So if we can take, so for an example, see here. So with the red, it's sometimes a little hard to see different values. You could probably see here that this part here is a little darker red. This part here is a little lighter, but when you make it black and white, you can definitely see, yeah, here's a dark, here's a nice bright edge showing some reflective light. And here's this nice white sort of highlight so that um, the light source is coming from here. So it helps, doing it black and white kind of helps sort of beginners break down the different values of objects, okay? So again, value is basically lights versus darks. That's basically all there is to it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to draw a vase, okay? So it's going to be pretty big, so all we're going to start out with is a very flat oval shape, so something like this, and start it at the very top of your paper, okay? Make mine a little bigger, I think. I'm going to erase any edges that I don't want. So you see, I draw very sketchy. Okay, so anyone who's kind of um, unsure of drawing or they don't like their first attempt, like, look at me, I'm, I'm doing like this, okay? I do it crazy. And then I erase anything I don't want, which is why it's so important to draw light because then you can erase anything that you don't want anymore. Okay, so make sure it's pretty flat. Make sure it's pretty flat. It's almost like a squished oval like this. So this is going to be the top of our base. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do two curvy lines like this. Okay. I'm going to fix up anything in here while you guys are doing that. So pretty simple. Two curvy lines. Make them a little longer. 
Now your base might look different from mine. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not an animal where things have to be a certain way. It's a vase, you know, vase, vases look different from one another. It's not the end of the world if yours looks different from mine. And then all you're gonna do is just kind of do another kind of curvy line out. This is what we call an S curve in the art world. So if you go in like this, really long tail on that S curve. Okay, so something like this. Okay. Do the same thing over here. Now I'm going to fix any inconsistencies I see in a second, but just so we get the main shape down. So something like this, as I'm sure you're going to guess. We're going to connect this with a slightly I mean, don't make it too straight, but don't make it too curvy. It's kind of something in between. So something like this. Okay. And that's basically a simple vase shape, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to fix up anything that looks a little odd. So I'm going to fix up this area here. Here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, I'm gonna fix up this area. It doesn't look as curvy. Oh, excuse me, as low as the other one. So yeah, something like this. Okay. Um, I'm also gonna fix the this part here. It still needs to be a little a little more squished than it is. Something like this. This is almost gonna be at this edge here. It's almost gonna be a horizontal line. Not quite straight, it doesn't need a little bit of a curve to show us the opening of the vase. It should look something like that. And then if you want to, you can do sort of a, uh, sort of the lip of the vase. So all you would do is do like another line underneath here, here, and we're gonna erase this little edge. So it has some more 3D elements to it. You don't have to. Just doing it because it adds a little bit more style to it. So again, all you really do is do another lip, another uh, line underneath. Something like this. Yeah, it looks alright. Um, and that's basically your, your basic vase. Um, I think what I want to do is make them a little Make it come out a little bit more, so it has more of a sort of a shoulder to it. Because right now it looks more, it looks like a vase, but it has milk jar vibes to me. <laughs> so all you're gonna do, and again, if you're happy with your base shape now, you could just watch me, you know, obsess about what mine looks like, because I can be a little crazy. So like this, okay, yeah, that's fine. We're going to stop there. All right. So now that we have our vase, you're thinking, all right, well, what now? First things first, we need our vase to sit on something, right? So we're just going to do a straight line from one edge oh, nope, 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 to the other. Okay. So get it as straight as you can. We're going to do it like, let's do it about not quite halfway through our vase. Pretty, pretty up there. We're just going to race in here. So something like this. Okay. So our next thing we're going to do, go ahead and grab your pencil. If you don't already have it, you should already have it, but hey, you don't know. Um, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to start shading. Now we first need to figure out where our light source is coming from. Now we've spoken about light sources before. So it's basically where the sun is shining, where the lamp is shining, that kind of thing, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to pick a direction. Now, if you want to do the direction I'm doing, you can. I would suggest it, especially if this is your first time with shading with graphite pencils. We're going to do the sun or the lamp, I guess, shining from this angle. Okay? So everything over here is going to be lighter than everything over here. Okay? So, what you're going to do is... Hold on, let me... Now, it's pretty important to get your line work, so the sketch that you have, you want it to be as, 
guess as light as possible, but you want it to be sort of as fixed up as possible. So make sure there's no scraggly edges or things like that where you're sketching, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start at this edge, so the leftmost edge of your base, and you're gonna start very gently shading. Now, when I say gently shading, what I mean by that is take your pencil and kind of lessen up your hold on it a little bit. Think about it as if you're kind of holding on to something that is easily going to break. And as you're pushing down, don't push down too hard, okay? Think about it like if you push down like usual, it's gonna snap in half, okay? It's a very delicate pencil all of a sudden, okay? So this is what you're gonna do, okay? You're gonna go in on the edge and you're just gonna kind of follow the curve and you're not gonna color in like this, okay? Not quite yet, you're just kind of shading in. Now as you're shading, a couple things. Make sure that you're not going like this, because sometimes with pencils, is if, even if you go back over it, you can still see the sort of zigzag. Do sort of circular motions kind of helps. Get rid of those edges, and we've talked about this before in class. So you know sort of the circular method. Okay, so something like this. Now, if you want to try sort of the, the zigzag, just make sure that you're doing them very, very close together. Okay, so because what, what I see sometimes is people going like this, and then they have these big gaps in between them. Make sure they're very, very close. Okay, so something like this. Very, very close. So you should have something like this. Okay. Now we're kind of seeing, okay, yeah, there's some, there's a lightness here. Okay. But we want to push it. We always want to push it, okay? So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and start at the bottom. We're going to go ahead at this edge, start darkening it up. So now you can start pushing down a little bit more. Okay, something like this. Because it's sitting on the bottom, the shadow of everything else is kind of pushing it, kind of pushing it down a little bit more. So it's going to be darker on the bottom, and also on the on the left side but the bottom really helps get that shadowy idea. So something like this, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing underneath the lip of the vase, uh, I guess, opening, because the shadow is of this little lip is going to be casting downward. So we want a little bit more shadow underneath here too. You see that? Something like this. So now we even have more depth. Remember, value gives you more of a three-dimensional shape to it, okay? It makes things look more realistic. So value, as long as you have shadows and highlights, makes things look more and more realistic. Because of course, we wouldn't be able to see anything if we didn't have shadows and highlights in real life, right? If we didn't have light, we'd be all in dark. And then we wouldn't be able to see nothing, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start darkening up everything else. So let's look at our example of our sphere here. Do you notice how only like the very, very edge here is light? Everything else is pretty shaded in. Like of course these guys here are darker, but in the, have, you do have some lightness, light shading here too. So what we need to do is do the same thing with our base, okay? So we're gonna keep extending the shadows that we have like almost like halfway through our vase. Now again, be very, very light, especially as you're getting closer and closer to the right edge, okay? You see that? And again, as I'm getting to this rightmost edge, I'm very, very gently lightening up my pressure. So as you're getting here, think about, oh my gosh, my pencil's gonna snap in half if I dig down really deep. So something like this. You see that? See how much of a difference that made? So we got this to this. It's even looking, that's looking even more realistic, okay? Now if you'll notice, down here, I do have some shadows. And you're probably thinking, well, Miss Dylan, you just said the rightmost area has to be all white. Remember, we're going from the top right. So this part here is gonna have the most highlight. Down here, gonna still gonna have a little bit of shadow because it's not, 
if it was like from here, if the sun was shining this way, then this would all be white, okay? But it's coming from the top right, so this part here is going to be left alone. But you will have some, you're not going to have a lot, okay, mind, you're not going to have a lot. You will have some shadow down here, okay? Something like that. So now we're going to start pushing our shadows. Now the one thing people are, is they're always scared to do is making things too dark. Okay, to do it super light and they're like, well, that's fine. Okay, no. Let's go back to our example here. That's from another project, sorry. Um, do you see how dark that is? That's super dark. That's crazy dark. Okay, and it makes it look even more realistic. So make sure, as let's go back to the, the left here. Start really going in and now think about, okay, adding a little bit more pressure to your pencil. And starting to go over really dig now it's gonna take some practice but what you're gonna find is that it might be kind of difficult fading the darker edges into the lighter edges so like fading it from dark to light so something like this now all that really is guys is basically what I'm doing as I'm doing this gradient we call it so dark to light is I'm literally adding less pressure as I'm going farther down so think about if it, if it helps, think about raising your pencil so I'm really digging hard in with my pencil here. And as I'm going farther in here, I'm doing, I'm digging in less and less. So almost think about if it helped, like lifting up your pencil towards the lighter area. <laughs> Sorry, you heard my dog. Um, so that's going to be, that's definitely the trickiest part for beginners is making sure it fades out. Okay, I see a lot of people just kind of going like this and being like, all right, well, I'm done. Well, that's not how things work. They fade out as the shadow fades into the light. Okay, so something like that. That's definitely the one thing that you'll have to practice at when you're starting to do this. And if you need to do a couple different examples, see dark over here, really pushing the dark as we're going this way. And what you can also do with graphite, I can't really show you on this because it's on a computer. Um, you can take your finger and kind of smear things together. And that way, if you're having trouble with sort of playing around with the pressure and stuff, that way, when you're smearing stuff together, like the lights and the darks, you'll have more of a smoother transition. Okay. Now you're probably noticing I'm leaving, this is a little advanced, but you guys are very smart, so I'm gonna let you in a little secret. I'm leaving a little bit of white on this edge. Do you guys see that on this edge here? I'm not completely coloring it in like this. I'm leaving a little white, and the reason being is that's what we call reflective light. So as the light hits the vase here, this is like reflecting around the vase and hitting this edge, if that makes sense, okay? It's also like going over and reflecting off. So it, it, if it helps you with like the realism there, that is usually what things look like. You have that bit of reflective light at the very edge, so something like that, okay? If it's a little, we'll talk about it later um, in, a, in another video because we're gonna do some more value shading and that sort of thing. We'll go over it a bit in a bit more depth, but that's just kind of how it should look. But again, if you don't wanna add it right now, that's fine because we haven't really spoken about it that much. So again, all I'm really doing right now is making sure that it's fading accurately into this sort of highlight here. So something like that. Now it's not perfect, because I'm on a computer, it can get a little wonky, but you know, that, that should do. Okay. So we got what we call our core shadow over here. So our darkest shadow here underneath the lip here. Let's go ahead and really add it dark down here at the edge, because that's where it's hitting the table. Okay, something like that. And it might look a little messy. That's okay, sometimes graphite drawings can be a little messy. Graphite 
so basically what's in your pencil is it can be pretty difficult okay especially because it's just black and white okay? you're just having these sort of basic values you're not having to rely on color so black and white graphite can be pretty hard but it really pays off it really helps you focus on the shadows and highlights of stuff okay now the last couple things we're going to do is of course we have to color in this all right so the sort of the inside where things go so like if you had a flower here <laughs> okay um all you're going to do is kind of the same thing but first we're going to start the darker area is going to be on the bottom okay and that's because obviously it's a hole right so things down here are going to be darker because the holes sort of sucking in the light like that so you're gonna do the darker edge here of course shadow over here and lighter as it gets to the right side because the light's still hitting it you see that mm. nah it's too dark way too dark just something like that Now, once we go ahead and do that edge, we're gonna work on the drop shadow. So the shadow of the vase. So if our light is coming from here, the shadow then is going to be cast this way, okay? So all we're gonna do, I'm just gonna start shading in. Now this part can be a little tricky. Make sure that it's not like a big blob underneath Okay, because that would mean the sun is shining directly on top of it. That's not what we have. So it's going to be slanted. It's going to be slanted this way. So again, the direction of the shadow depends on where the light source is shining. So again, if this is shining this way, it's going to slant the same way. So you see that? And of course, kind of very similar to what we did with the shadows inside of our vase. They're going to fade out, and this part here is going to be darker because, well, what do you think? Because this is where the vase is sitting, so the darker core shadow is going to be underneath here. Like that. You see that? That's making it look much more realistic. Just that little bit of value is making it look so much more sort of in sort of the space. Okay, so something like this and fade it out as you're going towards the edge of your paper. So something like that. And then get the lip a little bit. I didn't realize we didn't shade that in. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm gonna erase this. Hold on, I'm gonna redo this part. I don't like how that's looking. One second. So what I'm going to do for this part here a little bit more, I'm going to go ahead and um, back into my pencil. And again, doing the darker area up here. Like that. What I would do, I realize why it looked weird, leave a little bit of white at the very edge because that's the other side of like this lip coming around like that and the light will hit that more accurately than the inside of the base. So it should look something like this, okay? And if you need to, I, I usually won't recommend this because, you know, in real life, lines don't exist like this. Um, but if you want to, you can darken up any lines. At only at the very, do not darken up these lines, okay? Um, at the very edges, because sometimes they can blend in with the the core shadows, that sort of thing. So if I want to do that, I'm just going to add a little bit, not too much, but just, just, just enough. I'm going to erase any scraggly lines still here. And that, I mean, that's basically it. Okay, so we have learned how to accurately shade with graphite. Now again, keep in mind, this is difficult. I'm not going to lie, especially because again, black and white can be very hard because we're not, you know, leaning against colors to sort of help us with three-dimensionality we're just using the pressure of our pencil okay 
So if you're frustrated, just take a moment, take a breath, and then if you need to do other shapes, you can do that. Um, you can do circles, okay? You can do boxes. I like doing vases because they it's not, you know, like a, the circle is just a circle, right? But with a vase, you have this cool, like, curling edge. And that gives you a little bit more room to play with shadows, all right? But this is such an important skill um, to know. I knew that we had to definitely do it. We were going to do it, of course, on campus, but I figured, you know, with us being home until the end of the school year, we, we definitely have to go over this. And we'll be going over this more uh, in depth next week. We'll be going over different shadows, different... So I talked about the reflective light. We'll be talking about that too, okay? But that will be... That's going to be it for us uh, today, guys. Um, again, I would love to see anything that you've been making while we're away from campus, whether it's projects that, you know, we've done here or, you know, drawings that you're just doodling by yourself. I'd love to see anything that you guys have been doing. So, like usual, I will see you guys next week, and I hope you had fun. Again, any pictures, I would love, love, love to see. Thank you, guys. Bye.